Is it recording? Yeah. Oh. Uh, you got any ideas? What for the intro? Yeah. Not a fucking one. <sighs> Shit, we're like nine episodes in. I know, but I think, I think we might have run out of comedy. Oh, don't be silly. We'll think of something. I know. We'll, we'll fix it in post. It'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be all right. Yeah. No, no one will ever know that this conversation took place. Yeah, I'll cut this, obviously. Yeah. yeah. How's the rash? Yeah, it kind of stings. Kind of stings. He's got it's all over that leg now, isn't it? Like that, it's the whole leg. No, that that's not a leg mark. Oh. you got for me this week see the little goblin see his little feet <laughs> what is this and his little nosy woes isn't the goblin sweet yes we already did the creepy <laughs> lullabies like two episodes ago you didn't watch black adder it's, it's from black adder oh i'm very uncultured yeah you've <laughs> cultured i feel like that's cultured something people don't watch black adder Shh. well i feel like they do no. It's like boomer comedy, isn't it? Uh, boomer <laughs> comedy. <laughs> it's still funny. I'm Boomers just... don't listen to us, so we can say what we like. Yeah, boomer. Um, I've got. I've unfortunately, I've got a, a, something serious to start on. Yeah, a serious thing. It's oh not, no, it's not a joke. It's not funny. It's it's hugely serious. I want to address this to a man out there called Spencer Eldon. Spencer, if you're listening, you're fucking scum. <laughs> and what? I hope you fall into a what fucking happened? volcano, you absolute cunt. Who's Spencer? Spencer Eldon. Right, Spencer Eldon. So, you know, Nirvana's first album. Oh. No, second album, sorry. With the naked baby on the front. Naked baby, yeah. That's Spencer Eldon. Okay. And he's now suing Nirvana for child sexual exploitation. Right. Because he got his little dick out. Yeah, but wasn't he happy about it to start with? This is the point. So he's suing Nirvana, well, I say the rest of Nirvana, um, for sexual exploitation because obviously he couldn't consent and he's claiming to be traumatised by it. Oh, well, that's pretty... And yet... He has recreated this photo off his own back many times over the years, as can be found on the internet. He gave an interview about five years ago where he said, oh, yeah, being the Nirvana baby's been great for being able to pick up girls. And now all right. of a sudden, this little fuckface is short of fucking money. He thinks, ah, oh, I'll stick it to Chris Novoselic and fucking Dave Grohl and just sue him. And he'll probably fucking win as well. Wait, what was the name of the other one? Dave Grohl and Chris Novoselic. I didn't know the other one. Everyone knows Dave Grohl, don't they? Yeah, and, and Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. <laughs> Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain. <laughs> one his head that now looks like a hollowed out pumpkin. <laughs> I'm joking. He was burnt. He was what? <laughs> he was cremated, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. I know next to nothing about Nirvana. I know some of the songs. <laughs> We're the lights now. <laughs> in danger. So what, right, what? Here we are now. Baby sticks. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. Like, so what's happening? That's, that's where we are at the minute. He's what, showing so, him. So we and don't know Social what... media and the internet has exploded in a cloud of hatred for this we, man. Yeah. As... Because I'm, I'm a big believer. Believe you. I'm a believer. I believe you. I'm a believe you. <laughs> Are you? I'm a believer. I'm a believer, man. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm a big believer in the thing. Yeah, you should, it, when someone comes forward with an accusation of this kind, you should believe them, you know, until proven otherwise. But this guy can suck a dick. Well, he's proven himself otherwise, hasn't he? Yeah, he fucking has. And More if than once. any judge in America sits there and goes, "Yeah, all right, I, I get. Yeah, there's a child sexual exploitation. Here's X a million amount of dollars. They should be shot." <laughs> with a shotgun, all right? With a shotgun. <laughs> I did see I did see a comment on Facebook um alluding to this. They shared the article hmm. and then with the comment saying Well at least Kurt Cobain managed to dodge this bullet. <laughs> <laughs> 
Rip Mike Curtain. <laughs> so I just had to get that out there. You know, we've got nearly 300 listeners now. Mm. And well, well, we, we, we have a platform where we could say whatever we want. So I felt obligated to tell you, Spencer, that you're a fucking dick. Imagine if all 300 of our listeners happened to be the only 300 people in the world that side with this man. <laughs> then I'd happily lose all my listeners. Yeah. We're doing sense. the right thing by yeah. calling that fucker mm-hmm. out. Do you reckon he's just run out of people to use the story on to get laid with? Probably. Has he just turned like really ugly and it don't work anymore? Turned ugly. Have you seen the cover of that? He's a fucking ugly baby, man. <laughs> it's yeah, but it's not it the baby like, that's it, going out trying to get laid. Like someone's it? carved a potato. <laughs> <laughs> you ever watched Harry Potter, Mark? <sighs> yeah. They should have used one my of them ex-wife. little. My ex-wife was into. They should have used one of them little screeching carrot things. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The one that, oh, yeah, the one that, yeah, if you yeah. hear it scream, you just like die. I'm, I'm not au fait with it, you know, but you know what? The, I know, you know about I know, the carrot. I know babies, of the too. carrot. I thought that was a regular carrot though, because I don't eat vegetables. <laughs> I'm an I'm a I'm an opposite vegetarian. What? Why? Why don't you eat vegetables? Because they're shit. They are a bit. They taste like shit. Yeah, but that's why gravy exists, Mark. But why? Right, sorry. If you've got to invent a sauce <laughs> just to coat something to make it taste nice, what's the point in eating it in the first place? Why not just t- eat something else that tastes nice? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it does. I can't argue with that. That, that sounds logic. It sound fucking logic. I don't know. Vegetables are ass. I quite like a bit of broccoli. What's the worst one? The worst one? I think the worst one's carrots. Really? Yeah, I don't really like carrots. Yeah, I really you, like... You can't make broccoli into a cake. Challenge accepted. <laughs> right, we're pausing here. I'll just well, need a, I'll just need a lot of gravy. <laughs> gravy cake. No, I've been wa- I've been watching through a couple of the Harry Potter films actually oh lately. My God, why? And I've realised like literally everyone on that film are really bad actors. No, that's the thing. They're not. What do you mean they're not? Daniel Radcliffe and the the, the, the ginger one. Oh yeah, um, Ed Sheeran, Bron Peasley. Oh yeah, that's the um, one. <laughs> they're, they're the two of the worst actors to have ever walked the earth. But mm. the rest of the people in that film have won Oscars and shit for all the yeah, other stuff they've done. I thought Emma Watson was had absolutely fucking horrendous in that film. Uh, yeah, Awful. until she turned 16. And then... <laughs> <laughs> when, when I was a kid, I had, a, I had the biggest crush. On Emma Watson, on, on nice Rupert Grint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people did. Didn't they? They were, they were. Emma Watson's all right. They were. No, I, I thought she was a terrible actor in that. Yeah, but uh, people, I have this argument quite a lot. People go, "Oh, yeah, but there were kids when they started." Yeah, but that's not an excuse. They're still not good learned. child actors. Yeah, the, yeah, of course it is. Look yeah, they're still kid. Yeah, I mean, it's not an excuse to not learn along the way. Lots of people are bad when they first start doing something, but to do it for that amount of years and to earn that amount of money from it, there's no excuse for still being shit at the end. We How need- dare you stand there where he once stood? <laughs> Shut up, Potter, you cock. <laughs> you know, um, as I'm watching them, I'm just like, oh, we need to do like a whole segment on Harry Potter and, oh. it's, and its downfalls. You know, I, I'm. Do you know what Harry Potter's downfall is? Go on. J.K. Rowling. The woman's a mentalist. Yeah. Leave it alone, love. She's always on Twitter going, oh, Dumbledore's gay. All right. Well, what, what does that add to Harry Potter? I don't know. If it, if it was that important that he was gay, you should have put Look, it in the book. It does. It, it does. It does. It, it did does. seem. It, it did seem quite a lot like he was trying to nonce Harry. Nonce. He was getting groomed. Like all of the teachers absolutely. Close your eyes and put this wand in your mouth, right. Harry. In Harry Potter, there's a house in that school, one of the groups, right? Everyone can go to four houses, can't they? They Hogwarts, can. Hogwarts, Hufflepuff, Slytherin, and the one that no one knows. Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw's a mid-terrace house. It sounds pretty it? cool, though, doesn't it? It does, Ravenclaw. Yeah. Right, Hufflepuff. Imagine going, oh, awful. you're in Hufflepuff. Oh, oh, oh shit. Fucking hell. Ah. Oh. It, sound, it, it sounds like your house is named after the bubbles in Sprite. It sounds... <laughs> It sounds like the when a when a toddler gets into a, a Mardi. Oh, don't, don't listen to him. He's in a Hufflepuff. Right, exactly. But Slytherin, everyone knows, is evil. Are the cunts. Yeah. Why have it? <laughs> yeah, Look, exactly. what they should do is put the hat on them and it says, "Sorry, mate, you're in a Slytherin. Go find another school. <laughs> Go find yeah. another. You're wink. not slithering your way into Hogwarts. Whoa. Oh, pun. But oh my god, right? Why is everyone so obsessed with this one small boy? <laughs> 
Because he's the boy who lived. Everyone, yeah, but fuck. He's the boy who lived oh, because yeah. well, he's the boy who survived when that weird noseless fucking they magic care, bogey tried to kill him. But tell me this, they care about him so much that each year when school ends, they send him back to live with his abusive uncle <laughs> under do. the fucking stairs. Yeah, yeah, they do. Why? Yeah. Because oh, we love him so much. Look at him with his little fucking scar on his forehead. Because you know what? Ju- get back in the cupboard. <laughs> because their duty of care end. They've yeah. got to have holiday too. It's holiday too. <laughs> as soon as they, as soon as Potter goes back to that cupboard, mate, it's margaritas all around. I'm telling you. Mm, okay. Okay. Well, Telling that's my rant about Harry Potter. Over, I I've always I hated Harry Potter. I've always fucking hated it. I like it. Oh, mate, it's shite. I like it. It's shite, but it's all right. It's sh- it's I not f- all right. Right. I feel like the majority of films are shite, though. To be honest, <laughs> there's probably more shit ones than good ones, isn't there? Yeah, but that doesn't it's like make books. Films. It's like everything. It's all oversaturated. The majority of things are shit. Podcasts. Yeah, and that's why <laughs> we've got a podcast <laughs> yeah. because shit's acceptable. Yeah. Well, people keep buying it, don't they? What, podcast? Oh, shit. <laughs> I know I do. No, I met my M. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been up to? Um, well, I've got sad news. God, we've I had found, so much sad I news. Found, I found out today, Geronimo is dead. Fuck is that? It's, it's, it's an alpaca. What? Yeah. It's on the news. It's all over the fucking news, Dad. How do you uh, not know Geronimo's dead? Right. I didn't know that people in Haiti were dying. How am I going to know about a fucking llama or whatever it's, it's it is? A good, it's alpaca. All right. right. Have some respect. Okay. Well, no, I didn't hear about it, but it's all over the news. Apparently, this, um, this alpaca has been put to sleep by government vets. I didn't know the government had, uh, you know, Why? a wing of vets. Because same it, again, because right? In the be- same way, every, everyone in fucking Wizardland cared about Harry Potter. Why the fuck does everyone give a shit about this alpaca? Well, the, it's been put down because it's got bovine tuberculosis. Oh, shit. Mercy killer. Right? So, obviously, to prevent the spread to other al- animals, it's had to be put down. Right. But it's, it's someone's privately owned alpaca. And the government have said, oh, you know, we need to put your alpaca down. And they've, you know, fought against it, going, no, you're not putting my alpaca down, et cetera, et cetera. And then loads of people go, no, you're not putting this man's alpaca down. Yeah. It's riddled with disease. Yeah, but if my cat was riddled with disease, I would say, no, my cat chooses when it wants to go. We'll just leave this spike pit open. And if she so happens to jump in, <laughs> then that is her decision. You will not decide to put my cat down. Yeah, but if the bovine tuberculosis gets out, then we'll have no bovines. Yeah, we'll have no cows. Shit. <laughs> exactly. Oh, okay, so this could be the alpaca that ruined beef. Yes. Fuck. There you go. What do the vegans reckon, though? What do you think? Yeah, but I don't know. Because, right, they don't want the alpaca to be put down. But if the alpaca lives, all the cows die. Yeah. And we can't beef anymore. It's, I, don't, I don't think it's helped as well that it's, it's, it's a black alpaca. Ooh. Yeah, being put down by the white man. <laughs> Funny thing about alpacas. Went to a farm once. Um, and yep. there's a tractor ride. Cool story, Tra- Mark. There's a tractor <laughs> ride. <laughs> and it was with, da- it was with Flaniel and with Sophie, my <laughs> wife. And they went, oh, um, they were taking us around. They've got a really like, crackly microphone. They're telling you about all the animals. Right. And there's some alpacas. And he goes, oh, I'm sure these are the alpacas, or uh, those, <laughs> those camels. And I was like, and I went, you fucking what? <laughs> and I went, what's the matter? I went, did he just say that alpacas are allergic to camels? <laughs> and she went, what, you, what? And I said, he just said that alpacas were allergic to camels. What sort of shit is that? First, and uh, honestly, I went on a massive rant. I was like, first of all, they live halfway across the fucking world from each other. So what's it fucking matter? Second of all, what sort of fucking shithead scientist has put, you know, put what I assume is government funding and money conducting experiments to find out what other animals that alpacas are allergic to? Well, and, maybe, third, and third of all, why the fuck does it matter? Who gives a shit? Maybe it just happened organically. Yeah. Like there was, there was an alpaca out and a camel just come up. And the alpaca went, at you. And the camel went, bless you. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, um, he said related. Oh. Yeah. You can kind of tell. Same, same sort of family of animal. I don't think so, I so needed to tell him. He said, he didn't say allergic, Mark. I'm like, what did he say? He said, alpacas are related to camels. I was like, oh, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> don't you think alpacas are what would happen if you crossbred a horse with an ostrich? <laughs> 
Do you not feel like they've got real like similar traits? Yeah, but they're dead slow though, aren't they? Now, just, just ostriches are fast as foot boys, and the horses can be speedy as well. In fact, you... I've heard they race them. <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember on your stag do? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> the second one, the one I was at. Oh yeah. The shit one. So when we was coming back from Amsterdam, you know, when you had like an arm full of cheese or whatever. Oh, dude, every fucking time. <laughs> you just stopped it. Every fuck. Oh, no, I haven't. I haven't. Oh, Jesus. We'll keep that in. <laughs> I just thought I stopped the whole recording with my elbow. <laughs> you fucking oh, idiot. Right, so we was on the coach back to the ferry. Hold on, just can we just rewind to this cheese thing? I feel like you just had like an armful of cheese. I had no cheese. Who bought cheese? Not me. It was your brother. Didn't Probably. you go in a cheese shop? Yeah, he did. I bought. I didn't buy cheese. I bought some little um, Struppenwaffel <laughs> for Faniel, <laughs> and I bought some hilarious pink socks with cannabis leaves all over them for Sophie. <laughs> the I, man, I, the man I, of everyone's dreams. I bought no cheese, then. <laughs> oh, okay, I felt like there was cheese There's involved. Plenty of cheese at home. I was exceptionally hungover. Yeah, so as we was coming back, do you remember the guy who was driving the coach? Yes, and he was giving like a tour. The most and, Dutch man, and ever. you could hardly hear anything. It was like, and if you look to the right, there's the oldest building in the world. He was right? so Dutch. But wasn't he? whenever he stopped talking, he'd make a weird noise. <laughs> so he'd like say something like, and if you look to the left, very big wall, the and then he go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He was just making noises thought, into the mate, mic. Me, uh, me and my brother laughed all the way back to the fucking ferry port. Because if you look to the left, there's the tulip fields, and uh, which where they grow the tulips. So um, it's one of one of our main exports is the tulips. We have lots of different colours, and then if you look to the right, there's a Heineken uh, bottling plant. <laughs> I'm like, fuck it, mate. Be less Dutch. Oh. <laughs> But to, to be fair, honestly, I, we were me, we were pissing ourselves at the back of that car. I was, I was in such a state though that may, maybe everything you were saying was actual words, but I just thought that they were random noises into no, the no, mic. He, he was probably talking like Dutchman. He was talking. Uh, yeah, but he'd very, stop very occasionally and like just this. go. <sighs> yeah, I do remember. Do that. you remember? And everyone I would be sat there like, that. everyone like, what the fuck's going on with this? Get guy? the microphone out of your throat. <laughs> So, oh. speaking of um, different countries and, and mm. accents, I think that my son Flaniel might actually be um, Ukrainian or something like that, or Eastern European, just because of the way he says oh. shit. Like, he says stuff really weird, like someone who hasn't got quite, quite a grasp on the English language. Right. So, the other day we were watching a film, and uh, our cat Olga came and sat on my chest, and he started stroking her. And he went, oh, Olga, I love you. You're the best cat we're ever having. <laughs> Which, if you put it in an accent, oh, you're the best cat we're ever having. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's proper. Maybe he just knows in the future. Like, that you'll never have a cat as good as that one. You're the best <laughs> cat we're ever having. It's, it's not just that, though. Like, if he thinks something's going to take a long time, he goes, oh, this will take for ages. <laughs> I think he's secretly Eastern European, <laughs> and I'm not sure what to do about it. There's nothing you can do. Is there a benefit I can get off the government? Just keep him out of tracksuits and stop him squatting. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's as good a time as any to move on to stupid shit Flaniel said. Oh, hit me. I better don't, make don't sure I've actually me. got something, haven't I? Yes, please. <laughs> we went to Hubbard's Hills the day before yesterday, Bank Holiday Monday. Nice little beauty spot in Louth. Um, no, I, some people may know, some people not, but um, Flaniel's mum is not his biological mother. Someone else carried him and, and spat him out from the <laughs> baby cannon. <laughs> um, and uh, we were uh, on our way to Hubbard's Hills. Daniel's been there before. Flaniel! Flaniel's been there before, but he couldn't remember it. So for some reason, he was convinced that it wasn't real. What? I know. Okay. So we were on our way, and... Um, we, for some reason, we were talking about my granddad as well, grand, Granddad Massey. And um, he said, when I was in um, Jade's Belly, Jade's the name of his bio. Oh, okay. Name. When I was in Jade's Belly, I read Granddad Massey's mind, and he said it was just a legend. 
What could that possibly... What was just a legend? What, Hubbard's Hills? Hubbard's Hills. Hills. <laughs> <laughs> Being a man, Grandad Massey died when I was eight. <laughs> Fuck, this kid's got connections. I know, isn't it? It's, I mean, yeah. Maybe your ex-wife just had like a, um, a spiritual womb. <laughs> and No, because that'd be a positive thing. <laughs> Instead, it was just stanky. <laughs> so, um, I'm not sure this tops it, but here's something my girlfriend said. Right. We was walking around Brick Garden Centre because we thought it'd be, I don't know. We don't, we don't care much for gardens, but I like things to just look at as I roam. So, was, <laughs> so we was walking around. Do you roam often? Yeah. I roam every now and then. Just, yeah. just for a bit of fun. So we was going around the fish bit. You know, where there's all the little fish in the oh, I do, in yeah. the wet cages. <laughs> <laughs> and she just she just looks at some of these fish and she just goes, It's so cute to think that they are all alive. <laughs> yes. Yes it is. Could I didn't know what to think. If they were all dead. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, that's not there's so many fish there. Unfortunately, Mark, if they were all dead, it's not very cute to think that. <laughs> they, the thing is, fish don't really know they're alive, do they? Someone write in and tell us. I mean, especially if you're a fish. I mean, I'd be impressed. They, they not only know that they're alive, but they're seizing the day. Yeah. By and... emailing the Dark Ball cast. Right. I was reading a book. Okay. The, well, I'm still reading the book, to be fair. Um, Dracula by Bram Stoker. Hold up. Okay. Well, that was fun. That was a real sharp turn there, Mark. But it's to do with sort of language and shit. Oh, okay. Dead so, fish. Um, can you shoe on dead fish in? Kind of. Oh, go on then. Go ahead. So, um... <laughs> I was, uh... Obviously, the words had different meanings back, way back when. So, mm. for instance, I was reading an old book once, and, you know, when they'd write our, um... Get out of here, Mark said. Right. But they could also use, they also use sometimes with the word ejaculated. <laughs> so we get out of here, Mark ejaculated. <laughs> and I'm reading Dracula at the minute by Bram Stoker. Right. I mean, it's a very old book. Mm. Very, very old book. Yeah. And there's this bit where um Dr. Seward and Dr. Van Helsing go into um um a tomb to try and prove that this woman, Lucy Westenra, is actually not in her coffin where she should be. Right. Because she'd be dead. Well, that's a problem. It is. And, um... <laughs> so, they light this candle, and they go into the tomb. It's oh, proper man. took me by surprise. So, it says, holding the candle so that he could read the coffin plates, and so holding it that the sperm dropped in white patches and coagulated as they touched... And here, I thought... I sort of stopped and went... Did that say sperm? What does it mean? So, did that say sperm? What's this candle made of? Sperm. Why is he spunking on all the coffins? That's disrespectful. <laughs> he ejaculated. <laughs> Apparently, back then, candles were made from, like, the fat from sperm whales. Oh, my so God. So, the runoff was referred to as sperm. <laughs> <laughs> And I was just thinking, it doesn't all look today, that, does it? Because <laughs> he's just fucking wandering around in a tomb <laughs> with his candle over people's coffins. Fucking spunk going everywhere off, off his dripping from his spunk candle. Can imagine one of them. Watch where you put in that candle, he ejaculated. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to think that the candle looked like a big old dick as well. <laughs> with a flame just, just coming out the end yeah. on the way. <laughs> But like the candle version of chlamydia. <laughs> Speaking of spunk. Right. I've got a question. Yes. Why is it that women are allowed to make fun of us for how quickly we ejaculate, but we're not allowed to make fun of periods? <laughs> this is a charged question. What's upset you? No, it's just, I joined this, this page on, on Facebook. Well, oh, don't. It's called Sextetica, and there's a lot of sort of sex memes on it and stuff. Right, and, right, okay. 
And and someone just put something up about how fast guys come and like, oh yeah, guys coming fast and leaving us women unsatisfied. Yeah, if any time a man moans about a woman on a period, that's it. We're not feminists. We're horrible people. <laughs> we're patriarchal and all this shit. But men can't control. So if men- anything, it's a compliment. Yeah, exa- exactly. Like, there's, yeah, there's not many times that a guy goes, I enjoy this so much, I literally can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Like that. But what, I mean, men can't help it. Yeah. So why is, it, why is it acceptable? I don't think that's, I well, don't think that's right. Well, so- if your girlfriend ever says all to you, just tell her to hold it in. <laughs> yeah. What, you're in your period, can't you just hold it in? Yeah. Ugh. Just, can't you just clamp it shut? Oh, God. Oh, no fun for me, then. <laughs> yeah. So, sp- <laughs> speaking of this group... Okay. I've, um, I've been taking some screenshots. Oh, my. Yes. <laughs> yes, this is what we want, Mark. Um, I've been taking some screenshots of, uh, of, of people who put posts up. Mm. Because I have a feeling some of these people don't have an excellent grasp of the English language. Okay. Even less than your child. Even less than Flaniel. Okay. Um, it's amazing. Frankly, some of these things are absolutely amazing. So, um, hit me. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Could we show, can we call this segment Stupid Shit Sex Pest Say? <laughs> we can. Give it a nice so, little um, jingle, like, because I imagine they're into dark shit. So this was posted by uh, Farhan Sik. Mm-hmm. He asked a question in sex aesthetic. Okay. And, Is that uh, a play on words like sex and aesthetic? I think it might be, you know. <sighs> so um, I don't think that's very good, but I don't think I could do better, so let's forget I said that. So <laughs> this, uh, this guy asks, during sex... How long time you can? Oh. What now? <laughs> How long time? To- Do you not get that? Please Let, enlighten look, me. During sex? Yes. How long time you can? <laughs> he's, you know, he's, what he's asking Excuse is... Excuse me, Dan, can you just hold that period blood in, please? <laughs> <laughs> well, what he's, what he's actually saying is during sex, how long? Time it, if you want. <laughs> That's what he's saying. He's got his stopwatch out. Fair. Right. Okay. That's on me. Um, I speak idiot, you see. So I can translate. All right. Okay. I have a feeling that this next one, uh, a post by T. Bosman. Oh. Um, T. Bosman. I know him. <laughs> it's just a letter T. It's, it's Piers Brosnan's Bos, nephew. Then man. Right. I think he's meant twice in this. He's put the word sigh or size. And I think he meant to say signs. Signs. But I'm going to say size, because that's what he says. Say exactly what he's written. What are signs that show when a woman is horny? Question mark, no space. Any sigh? Question mark, no space. How does the pussy react? (laughs) In the word pussy, I I just want to point out that he's taken out the U and one of the S's and changed them for little stars. Ah... You know, like pussy. I could say pissy. Pussy is a swear word. It might be. How does the pissy react? I can't translate that one, actually. That's that's not even idiot. That is beyond. I know. It's it's weird, isn't it? <laughs> you got any more? I've got... I I've love got, this. I've got, I've got a couple. Okay. Um, I've got a couple saved, but then we'll have a look at the group, shall we, and see, see what's going on there. So, um, there's a good one. This is by Usama Mayo. Right. And not only is the post great, but the comment underneath it is as well. So this guy puts, I'm horny in social media, but in real, I don't even know how to kiss. Oh. <laughs> Dude, that... Sad as that's fuck, sad. It? Do you think, like, he was... It's like he'd been posting, like, so aggressively sexually online for so long, and he went, it's time. It's time it's to come I forward. Need someone, I need someone to know. Because yeah. he was probably thinking in his head, like... The reason I'm not getting laid is because women think I'm too much of an experienced and aggressive lover. <laughs> and so he was like, I need to just lay it down, let them know yeah, I'm vulnerable. The, yeah, but there's, there's, there's a way to do it, isn't there? By going, all right, you know what? I haven't had sex with that many women. You know, I'm, I'm not as probably as sexually uh, confident as I make out. This guy's like, I don't even know how to kiss. Don't even know. Don't even know how to kiss. I mean, that's strong, isn't it? Underneath, 
um, a man called Cons T Cons T. has commented saying, that's good, space, three exclamation marks. Take care of those lips, space, <laughs> comma, comma. <laughs> End <Yeah>. of comment. <laughs> Do you reckon he forgot to put the advert in there? It's, it's actually for, like, Nivea. Nivea moisturiser. <laughs> That's them, good. Man. Take care of them lips. Um, this one was a bit... This, this is, I didn't take a screenshot of this because it's uh, written badly. Right. All the sentence is structured badly. I took a screenshot of this because um, it's very inflammatory. <laughs> To, towards women Shit. and it's fucking hilarious and in fact I was the first person who commented on this post no way and my comment simply was I cannot wait to see some female reactions to this question <laughs> you put your comment there just to get notified yes amazing this was a question from Mohammed El Masri okay who asks and I would like ladies listening to email in or message us on Facebook. I want your answer to this question. I will pass them on to Mohammed for you. He asks, those ladies who use dildos and vibrators, what's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. You know what? Um, <laughs> I mean, respect to the guy. He... He had something on his mind, what? and he's just gone for What's it. What's your fucking problem? Oh, my God. I, I mean... What, what, what are these people thinking? I can safely tell you that he was ripped to shreds. It's time for WikiHow! WikiHow! Oh, this is, I think, one of my favourite parts oh, of this show. I can't wait. I like looking for them and then finding them and, and seeing that people really, really want to teach people how to do dumb things. <laughs> like, someone's job is to, like, write and edit these things. Oh, and no. I noticed earlier, I wanted to leave, like, a tip on the bottom of one of these. And um, they get you have to get them like verified. Someone has to read over them before it gets put as a tip, and that makes me really sad because I really wanted to wreak havoc on this website. And imagine it being your job to read all the shit that people oh. put on there. Well, it's it's becoming our job to read some of the shit that people put on there. <laughs> yeah, but we're doing ironically. We're man. commenting on this. So this week we're going to learn. Oh, give it to me. How to get people to dream about you. <laughs> so I'm a bit of an expert in this field. Um, really? Do people dream about you often? Well, I assume you do. I'm dreaming about you right now. Oh, wait, no. Sorry, I'm looking at you right yeah, now. Yeah, you're awake. Yeah, sorry. Is, <laughs> I'm I, here, I often I? confuse the two. Getting someone to dream about you can be difficult. You can try to influence other people's dreams, but it may not work, as a subconscious creates dreams to deal with the problems you're facing. Nonetheless... You can try the tricks in this article to influence someone you know, first by getting into the person's mind before he or she goes to sleep, and second, by being memorable in general. <laughs> That's see, right. Do you see what I'm getting from that, right? W without even going into the advice and, and, and all the shit that it's going to teach us, mm -hmm. I imagine what it's trying to tell me to do Say if I wanted to get Sophie to dream about me, we'd be laid next to her and go, night, babe, night, babe, love you, love you. Dream about me. Mate, do something memorable. You've just guessed the article. Have I? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, method one of two. Getting in the person's mind. That sounds uncomfortable. Mm. Try giving the person a picture of yourself. This trick will work better if he or she places you on his or her nightstand. If you are the last image a person sees before she sleeps, okay, it's written by a man, she'll man. be more likely to dream about you. I love how it's like he or she on his or her. If you are the last image a person sees before she sleeps, like, yeah, they've oh, come given on, up. They've like, given yeah. Up. yeah. <laughs> if you're gonna start, let's stop the finish. pretense. So um, to begin with, I'm going to send you a photo. That you can put on your nightstand. Huh? Okay. You so get your phone ready. All right. Okay. I wanted something, you know, that, We're gonna have to, that you're really going to think about. I want you to put a filter on the microphone so you don't hear me ejaculate. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's turn the volume up so people can know when it's come. Oh, I've got it. <laughs> 
What is it you see in there, Mark? <laughs> Into the microphone, Mark. What I'm seeing is a singular testicle. It's my testicle. Yeah, yeah, it's your testicle. In the clothes that you were wearing when I turned up. That I'm still wearing now. You're still wearing now. It's a smooth testicle. It's because, Mark. But there's a lot of hair around it. Completely unshaven and trimmed. So you just have bald testicles but lots of pubes? No. You, I mean, the pubes I'm seeing here look like the coat of a dog. <laughs> so what you're seeing there is I've actually pulled one testicle up above my waistband <laughs> in, in order to keep my penis still hidden from the camera. Yeah, that's a good point. So How the smoothness you, you are seeing is the taut ball sack skin. <laughs> I put a lot of time into this. So Mark, before you go to bed tonight, you need to look at that picture. Okay. I'm sure it's forever etched into your mind. I mean... My problem is that I have one eye that's permanently closed. And you know when people go, oh, I'll say it every time I close my eyes. <laughs> well, half of it's always there now. <laughs> yeah, you're always 50% seeing that image. <laughs> it was, I mean, it looked like a plucked chicken thigh. How do you feel? How do I feel? Mm. Strangely aroused. <laughs> <laughs> he ejaculated. <laughs> when okay. I get home, I'm going to light a sperm candle. Okay. So, it's roughly... It's roughly no, five I thought it was quite smooth. <laughs> it's roughly five past nine right now, so... Check this one out. Call <laughs> or text the person near bedtime. It's pretty late. It's approaching I, I, bedtime. I'd quite like to be in bed. Okay. If you talk to the person before he sleeps... Okay, we swap gender now. Okay, yeah. He's more likely to be thinking about you when he goes to sleep. So, I'm going to send you a message. <laughs> Yes. Okay. It's my ball again. <laughs> it's the exact same picture of the exact same bollock. I just want you to remember. <laughs> I will never forget your dead bollock. Step three. Talk to the person. Wait until the can person... I just, can I just interject? Yes. How many steps are there? There's a few. Is every step going to end in a picture of your bollock being sent to me for... <laughs> <laughs> if only, Mark. If only. <laughs> I actually only had two pictures of my bollock, so... Oh, okay. Then. That's yeah, right. yes. That's Can't send any more. That's not how technology works. <laughs> if you reach your, your cap... They were your, two separate your pictures. Cap on your plan. They were just taken in really quick succession. Quick, so yeah, yeah. So you've got like a... You've nearly got like one of them um, stop motion films yeah. of, of a test. If there was more, you'd see it gently bouncing. <laughs> If you look closely, though, Mark... You'll see it resting on uh, your, your missus's eyelids. You'll see that in the second photo, it was actually the other ball. Is it? No. Oh. No, it's the same picture. I sent it again. Right. Step three. Talk to the person. Wait until the person is in deep sleep. While the person is dreaming, <laughs> try saying something to them quietly, such as, dream of Nikki, or, didn't Nikki look pretty tonight? <laughs> Don't be loud enough to wake them. The reason this may work is because you tend to incorporate sounds and sensations into your dreams. Therefore, if you use your voice to talk to a person, you may be able to trigger your image As in her mind. As opposed to using your knuckles to talk to a person. So this, this kind of weirds me out, because look, if you're sharing a bed with someone, mm. why do you want them to dream of you? You've and already also, achieved. If you're sharing a bed with them, why do they need to have a picture of you on their nightstand? You're there. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe it's because... This is no, maybe it's because normally the quilt is covering up your bollocks. I don't think... <laughs> so you can have a picture Well, no, next. actually, because my bollocks get too hot, we have got a special hole in our quilt so my bollocks can just peek <laughs> through. <laughs> <laughs> that um, way we can make love and one of the one on the bottom will always be warm. <laughs> Oh. So, um, step four is quite fun. Use a characteristic smell. Trout. So you might have noticed tonight quite a smell. Uh, I haven't, actually. Oh, well, that was a waste of mincemeat. 
<laughs> There's no such thing as a waste of mincemeat. Whether you have a signature perfume or you prefer a particular soap, introduce the scent to the sleeping person. Why do they have to be sleeping? I know. Oh, because that's God. mainly when you dream. Um, so, like, if I it, completely forgot that that was the. If, if you use like a certain shower gel all the time and you want it to be that smell, do you just go up to one with a sleeping and just fill the mouth with it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, just just before they're about to get into bed and, and lay down, you just squirt it onto the bed. <laughs> so then they lay into a nice, nice soapy mess. <laughs> Introduce a sense of the sleeping stuff my wife normally lays in. <laughs> I'll only <laughs> I'll only says introduce the sense of the sleeping person. You come up and go, This is right, guard, cool cool breeze. <laughs> Um, I know you're asleep, but uh, I heard this can be incorporated into your dream. Yeah. Right guard, cool breeze. <laughs> Are they paying you? Pay me right guard. <laughs> I know where you live. <laughs> Mr. Right. Richard Wright Guard. <laughs> double barrel last name, because his wife insisted. Do you know, I, I once knew someone with a double barrel last name, and it's the greatest name I've ever heard. Michael McShotgun? No, oh. it, but it's similar. Go on. J- Panther Cannon. Oh, my God. <laughs> Should we bleep imagine his the, name? Imagine, like, the mechanics Should we bleep his first it? name? You can do if you want. Yeah. Just, I don't know, people are going to go Bleep looking for this man. Panther Cannon. Bleep Panther Cannon. Bleep Sick because... name. <laughs> well, what if by some sort of massive coincidence he's changed his name by Deepol to Bleep? Oh my God. <laughs> and we just outed this man. <laughs> Dead thing. Oh, step five. Record a video of yourself. If you can get the person to play it before bed, you may be able to encourage the person to dream about you. Mark, I'd like you to pick your phone up again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> I went for it, though. That would have been amazing. You you detested the idea, but you still had a go. You De- was going to... You De- was going to grab your phone. Detested. Detested. Right. <laughs> it's because I'm invested, mate. I'm invested in this, pro- this process. I want to dream of you, Tan. You, I'm sure you will. I can't not after all this, <laughs> after the amount of bollock I've seen. <laughs> seen more of your bollocks tonight than I have done like for the past 30 years of mine. With this <laughs> tucked underneath this belly. <laughs> Number six, Mark. Leave a memento that reminds the person of you. For instance, leave your favourite necklace behind that reminds him of you. Who are we trying to attract here? I don't know. If keeps, I was gonna, it keeps switching, doesn't it? If I was going to leave you something to remind me of, maybe it'd be a last last Halloween's pumpkin <laughs> rotting and, yeah, and just rotting, rotting away, and, rotting and sodding. Well, that that kind of if you put it on the nightstand, like it suggests here, try leaving it on his nightstand to remind him of you before you go to sleep. There'd be a signature smell. It'd be on the nightstand yeah. near where the photo. Fo- you should have a photo next to it of what it looked like at Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Same. I've had it for six years. And within it... <laughs> I refuse to buy another. <laughs> within it, you could put a little uh, little dictaphone where you've recorded a little message, and then you can just have it press and play. Dream of me. <laughs> I am the pumpting. Pumpting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the punting man. <laughs> I'm Mr. Pumpton. <laughs> Rotting away. <laughs> I've had enough. The image of me has been pumped into your brain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, method two of two. Being memorable. So I feel like this could have been... I feel like everything you've done at the beginning is a little bit, you know, manipulative. <laughs> Same. Let's split the difference. Manipular rapey. <laughs> Rape manipulative. <laughs> Great word. <laughs> Verb. <laughs> Coming soon to a dictionary near you. A dictionary near you? Yeah. Just, you just sometimes look around and go, oh, it's a dictionary near me. Yeah, you left one on my nightstand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Being memorable. Let your unique characteristics shine. What if you're a boring cunt? Well, you go back to method one. There Leave stuff on the nightstand. Yeah. Smell bad. I th- it's uh, very st- send a picture of your bollock. <laughs> it's very stalkerish. It is a little Isn't bit. It? Okay. Whether you like bold glasses or 20 cats, 
<laughs> it's the things that make you unique, that make you memorable. Don't be afraid to show that side to the person you want to dream about you. Oh yeah, here's my cool glasses. And here's my entourage of cats. <laughs> Well, yeah, no what, one would forget that. What the, are the cat's names, Dan? Uh, Boxy. <laughs> Squidgy. Uh, furry. Uh, Pumpkin. Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia. First name Yugo, last name I, Slavia. I feel like it could really be memorable. Like, oh, look at my funky glasses and look at these 20 cats that I managed to fit into a soup tin. <laughs> you know? Memorable. Mmm, cat soup. Cat soup. How Korean. Ah, Bisto. <laughs> and that was the name of the sixth cat. <laughs> Bisto. Ah, Bisto. Not just Bisto. Ah, ah Bisto. Bisto. What you calling that cat in at night? Ah, Bisto. <laughs> ah, Bisto. Your neighbour's like, fuck it, it really does like gravy. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, be authentic. That is, don't hide your opinions or thoughts. Being who you really are will help you stand out. For instance, if the person you are trying to get to notice you asks you what movie you like, don't just say, oh, you know, comedies. Be, <laughs> be specific. I really like the latest Star Trek movie. I know a lot about, I know a lot of Trekkies hated it, but I loved the storyline. Okay, so, so you need to be honest, basically, is what it's yeah. saying. You need to be the opposite of elusive on this so, one. What I think to get you to dream of me tonight, Dan, I hate those shorts. Oh. If I so, well, I'll, to be, I'll, I'll remember trying, that. I'll be trying going to, to sleep. Do, trying to do something honest that will make. I'm trying to be really brutally honest so that you dream of me tonight, Dan. I hope you never wake up. <laughs> And I'll go to sleep like, oh, oh, what if I don't? Ooh. I think all of my plans revolve around waking up tomorrow. I think he Arbisto wished... is a terrible name for a cat. Oh, stop! You're really <laughs> hurting me now. That <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> step's terrible. Yeah, I mean, that'd be the easy way, wouldn't it? Say something absolutely horrible that someone's going to think about. Yeah. So okay. if I want Sophie to dream of me tonight. Night, babe. Night, babe. Love you. Love you. You're cooking shit. <laughs> <laughs> Not only does she dream of me, but I get a severely battered penis. <laughs> I don't mean battered as in, like, from a chippy. <laughs> <laughs> Just beaten up. Number three. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Give the person a compliment. People like being told nice things about themselves, and you will increase your chances of being memorable if you do compliment someone. Dan, have you ever told you I have a very symmetrical nose? Ooh, I'll be thinking about that. Number four, do something unusual. To stick in someone's mind, you need to stand out from the crowd. Therefore, you need to do things out of the norm. Wear a silly hat around the person. Bake a cake for him or her. Do something that makes him or her remember you in particular. I mean, run them over. This is a bit of a stretch. Hit, I mean, okay, hit, hit them with your car. Bake a cake for someone. Fine. Do something that makes him or her remember you in particular. Wear a silly hat around the person, <laughs> just around them. So that like, whenever they walk into the room, quick. Mind you, though, do you think that's what? Oh, they've left. I can take me. Do you off. think that's what happened with all the? Uh, what you know, the fedora tippers. Yeah. You know, milady. Milady. Yeah. Like, what, what constitutes a silly hat, though? Because, like, top hats are silly, but Slash pulls it off. Yeah. So if you, what have you got to have on your, on your, like, a fucking bath on your head or something? <laughs> pheasant. <laughs> the whole pheasant. Oh. A live pheasant. Half a peacock. Half a but like down the centre. Yes. <laughs> the, right, laid, the right half of the peacock. It's laid like the insides onto your head. Yeah. So all the outside is like, so you've got like a leg on one side yeah. and like half its head on but the other. But it's still alive and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> I am in half. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good diction for a half peacock. It is, isn't it? Luckily, they've kept the half of the brain that's the language centre. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they somehow managed to, before it, before they cut it in half, beat it in such a way 
that the brain went all the way into the side they were keeping. <laughs> it's rare, but... It's rare, it happens. Yeah. Many times. I mean, I've seen it before. Yeah. When someone was trying to make me dream about them, uh, <laughs> they did a similar thing with a porcupine. They said, hey, watch me beat this porcupine to death. <laughs> and Ooh, I dreamt... I'll dream about that tonight. I've never not dreamt about that. <laughs> <laughs> Number five... Listen intently. One way to show you are interested in a person is to listen intently. You show you genuinely care about what the person thinks or says. Because this quality is rare, it will help you stand out. So everyone listening to this podcast, we're dreaming of you. I think this second method is less about being in someone's dreams and more about just making friends, isn't it? Yeah. It's this not, could apply to not, most things. Yeah, exactly. Just like if you want to get... In with someone, you know, to be their boyfriend or girlfriend, you could do all this. Mm. Yeah, you could try. Maybe not, I think maybe the, not the half peacock. The but... best way to make someone dream of you is to come in their ears. <laughs> Explain. Just like... <laughs> uh oh A man's essence of his soul is in his cum. And I think... And you know, like in the BFG, where he blows the dreams for a trumpet into the kids' heads... Right. You come in someone's ear, it's like kind of salty BFG, isn't it? <laughs> it I mean, it's close to the brain, isn't if it? If I come in your ear, you'll dream of me. I'm telling you. If you're just meeting a person, give them a memorable piece of information about yourself. The best kinds of hooks are funny. For instance, okay, this, this is going to be fun, because this is Wiki Howl telling us something funny. You ready? For instance, say you're meeting a friend of your... Oh, fuck, I fucked that. It's all in the <laughs> delivery, I imagine. For instance, say you're meeting a friend of your sister at a gathering in Arizona. You could say, hi, I'm Carrie's sister from Oklahoma. I tried to leave the tornadoes behind, though. <laughs> Step seven. So Albert, when you said do something memorable, I, I, yeah. I immediately thought... I don't know why my, my, my head went to this, but hi, my name's Mark. I invented the waterfall. <laughs> it's a, a strong. It is. Who invented the waterfall? Sir John C. Waterfally. <laughs> Waterfally? Where's he from? Waterfalton. <laughs> <laughs> hi, Shit. my name's Mark, and I played the shark in Jaws. Shit. I told that to my wife on our first date. Because we already knew each other, and I said, oh, she did that really cheesy first date thing where we get to know each other. So she, I can't remember what uh, she said, but then um, she said something about you, and I said, well, not a lot of people know this, but I played the shark in Jaws. Wait. Prove me wrong. Let's do start. that Let's do that really cheesy thing on a first date where people get to know each other. You mean... The first getting date. Getting to know each other. Oh, yeah. Oh, so cheesy. Like, oh. Yeah, but it's like people... Oh, and, and it did cheesy when people get to know each other. Oh, I don't even know if a fucking first name. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm super fucking cool. So, I'm married to a woman so I've tell, never met. Tell me why you're wearing half a peacock on your head. <laughs> you know too much. I must leave. How elusive. <laughs> step seven is the last step. It's been an emotional journey. We're gonna, we're gonna know how to <laughs> make, make people fucking dream. <laughs> Yawn. It's still this talk of dreaming, man. Yeah, it's, I feel like as soon as you caught eye of one of them bollocks, you've been itching to dream about it. I am. I can't wait. It's gonna be the wettest dream I've ever had. Pick interesting topics when starting up a conversation. Move away from questions about the person's job or the weather. <laughs> Questions about the weather. <laughs> Excuse me. What is the weather? Hey, why are clouds? <laughs> In Dan, rain. Rain today. <laughs> rain is like a waterfall, which was invented by John C. Waterfally. <laughs> In 1739. <laughs> Before which, like rivers, just ran straight. Yeah. They weren't allowed to climb that high. If they got to a cliff, they stopped. <laughs> 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 Fuck's sake. 
Water was a lot less persistent back then. <laughs> the clouds were a lot cliff. lower. Just got to a cliff and went, oh, fuck. Oh, oh no. What shall we do? And then John C. Water Foley came and said, why don't you throw yourself over? Do you reckon the water at the bottom sat there going, oh, I've water fallen. <laughs> the, water, the water at the bottom's like, before the waterfall came along, was like, I miss my family at the top of the cliff. <laughs> We got separated. <laughs> Why would water know it exists? <laughs> How do you know it doesn't? That's a very good for, And that's the kind of question you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be dreaming about that, Mark. Go on then, what's the final step? We've just done it. What was it? I forgot. <laughs> Pick interesting topics. Why waterfalls? Why are we not fucking married, Mark? Do you know what? Well, because um, we're men and it's wrong. Um, <laughs> I thought we wasn't Mormon anymore. Um, do you know what? I, and this is my genuine opinion. Go on. Dreams are bullshit, Dan. Right. They don't mean fuck all. Mark, this is... Wh- why do you People say go this into right the at, psychology of dreams. Why don't you say this right at the fucking start before I started that whole segment? Because then we wouldn't have content. Shit, that's a good point. People say this all the time about the psychology of dreams and what they mean. Fuck all! They yeah. don't mean fuck all. It's like someone sat there and went, oh, everyone sleeps. Now, maybe I can Everybody make some money off their dreams. Sleeps. Make some money off their dreams. Yeah, someone went, maybe if I can explain all this ridiculous shit that everyone insists on telling people that they saw when they were asleep, I could make bullshit. some money. Yeah, it's actual bollocks. So I'm sorry, people out there who think that your dreams mean something. They don't. Your life's a lie. Kill yourself. <laughs> we can't end a segment on that, Mark. I'll end a segment how I want. All right, yep, segment up. Much like my peacock hat, this is half of my podcast. Kill yourselves. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a brand new event for this year's Olympics. My name is Hugo Fingers, and this is Minefield Tap Dancing. First up in the women's solo category, we have Argentina's Helena Sugarshell. And off she goes. It's a lovely start with some confident moves, a very graceful brush into a ball change and you can just see the fear in her eyes starting to show as she goes into a series of heel drops. And that's a routine complete with 7.4 from the judges. A little harsh maybe, but it just might be enough to stand on the podium. In this sport, every time you can stand after a routine is a win in my book. Next is Germany's Jemima Pork. She's been making ripples in the minefield tap dancing world lately, as you can see by her missing arm. It's a confident start, but I can't help but notice that she's staying away from the far right of the stage. Whether that's because she's trying to avoid mines or jokes, who knows. There's some very purposeful steps which result in an 8 from the judges. She must be happy with that. Next up is Scotland's Catherine Lumpy, her faithful husband Jashwari watching in the crowd. Avid watchers of the sport will have no doubt followed the controversy surrounding Catherine regarding the legality of her equipment. Following her accident in the European Championships in which she lost a foot, some have argued she would not be allowed to compete with her current setup. A regular tap shoe on her foot and a 50 pence piece sell it out to her stump, but here she is, making a graceful, if slightly uneven routine. Oh, and there she goes. No foot loss this time. That one has spread her everywhere. No doubt we'll see some of the bones caught by the crowd goers on eBay later. And yes, you can just see her husband Jashwari there in the crowd, blood spattered, angrily paying his bookie. Okay, we're going to take a quick break while the stage is wiped down for the next dancer. It's a 3.2 from the judges. Not bad at all. <laughs> 